Hi, I'm Fran McNeil, and I'm a business coach. My presentation is performing and thinking like a CIO. So it's for career improvement opportunities. The behind the scenes look on how you can get one. Thanks for joining this session. My name is Fran McNeil. I'm a business coach, and really what that means is I help people be dangerous. We can be dangerous on a lot of levels. As Deborah shared, uh, there are some things that you want to avoid. And um, I'm going to focus on financial understanding and the power of being able to think like a CEO, think like a CIO, think like the people that make some of those decisions. And we're going to, my standpoint is that the financial, using the financial lens, is an important lens. That would give us a great presentation um, and really help identify the how and the why of leadership and how you can take personal responsibility on that. I am going to expand on that well, like from a different perspective, and that's around the finances. So the three things that I'm going to be covering today are looking at financial statements. And this is not going to be a class in finance, but the core question that I am going to kind of do some checks, some sound checks, some thinking checks for you is where's the money? And why if you're trying to improve your career, why would knowing where is the money of each one of these Why would knowing where is the money, why would that be important? If you're trying to improve your career, on your green piece of paper, I'd like you to divide it into four parts. So you can draw a line around the middle and then a line straight down. So you've got four quadrants. Uh, no, they don't need to be equal. We're holding a portrait, a line right down so that you're separating it left and right. And then a line across the middle so you're separating it top and bottom. We are not creating a dollar bill, but I am going to say that this is representative of money and something that's of value. In the top right corner, I'd like you to create three circles. There's a smaller circle, it's almost like a target, then a circle around that circle, and a circle around that circle. In the inner circle, you can draw a line to it. So it's three circles. One, two, three. Circle, then circle around. Oh, good. Like excellent. That. Excellent. You circle, circle around. It's not an art class. And then another circle around. Okay. Giggling is good. That's right. Okay. In that inner circle, you can do kind of a little line that points to it. I'd like you to identify that that's you. The second circle is your department or your business unit, and the third cir circle is the organization. And outside of the organization is other stuff like other business industries, the competition, um, the international markets. When we talk about value, and Clifford, and, and I, I heard it in several comments, businesses are in business to make money. So, value is defined on these three levels. You as an individual need to know where they make money, is there enough to pay me, am I producing in a way that creates literally revenue. For some organizations, the ratio is, if I pay for every dollar I pay you, you should be generating anywhere from $10 to $50 from the work that you do. Why? Because organizations have overhead. Um, organizations want to make a profit. In terms of your department, you need to know your department's goals and how they financially um, impact the organization. And then finally, on the organization level. What, uh, one document that organizations use to sort of say, are we doing well or not, are we not doing well? And in the um, upper left corner, I'd like you to write the word income statement. The income statement literally lets you know, income statement literally lets you know how much money came in, so that's revenue, 
how much money went out, that's expenses, and what's left. And organizations, because they want to make money, they want profit. So that income statement is absolutely critical. For those three circles that you just drew, in addition to your leadership, in addition to your performance evaluation, on a quarterly basis, ideally, you're taking a scan of how much revenue did I help directly and or indirectly create? What were the expenses related to what I've produced as an individual performer and a team performer? And how profitable or what value did I add as an individual? So part of what I'm saying is business runs on numbers. So it's not Duncan Dunn's commercial. It runs on numbers. And your awareness of the numbers in the terminology that business cares about, which one of them is an income statement, is absolutely critical. So to the degree that you understand that, on the organization level, in your organization's annual report, there is a corporate-wide income statement. And that would be something that I would encourage you to take a look at. And even if you look at the consolidated numbers, what are the revenues, what are the expenses, what's the profit? So that's an action step. Make sure that you pull out your uh, annual report for your company. It may be online. Um, I know in the past they invested, corporations invested a lot of money in creating uh, printed documents. In that same corner where you have income statement, I'd like you to write down balance sheet. Because that is a standard tool that is used by every organization, whether it's a small business, sole proprietor, or a large multinational company. Balance sheet really looks at assets. What do we have of value? Cash is clean. Oh, people say can, but I'm going to Cash is clean, so, and then it's, um, you know, all other land building equipment. It looks at liabilities, what do we owe, which is different than expenses. And then it looks at equity. How do you think your organization views you in terms of the balance sheet, documents? And these three documents universally have components that are allowed to be on them and not allowed to be on them. So today is, in a sense, about new vocabulary. The assets are on the balance sheet, as I mentioned, and they need to equal the liabilities and equity. And your discussion was great, and I'm going to say, in financial terms, assets mean something totally different. So it is not about you as a person. And the uncomfortable thing is, if business managers get bonuses based on owner's equity, and literally dollars that are created, and you're not part of this balance sheet, it does influence to some degree why, when corporations are making decisions just on the numbers, you don't count. And I think it gets back to some of the things that Deborah said, and probably some of the things that Pat are going to, Pat's going to say, in that you need to understand that in business, there's almost this cold area that's very well defined, where you're not in the picture unless you speak the language. Small, small picture, but assets are things of value in the corporation's business, if you have your own business. It's cash and equivalents, so um, it's inventory. You're certainly not inventory. Um, it's fixed assets, property, plant, and equipment, uh, minus things that might be depreciated. And that's it. You can't be sold, so you don't show up on it. Liabilities are not risks that maybe you were talking about, I don't want to be a liability. These are things like accounts payable. What do we owe others? 
So assets are things that we own and that can be sold for literal dollars. And liabilities, they're short term and they're long term like loans, stuff we have to pay back. And because assets need to equal liabilities plus owner equity, in order, this bottom line has to equal this bottom line. So for example, this is 188,000. If this is 46,000 roughly, then the difference is the owner's equity. So if this sounds different for you, one of the next steps would be to take a very entry level, not accounting class, but a very entry level, and there's several online, um, if you email me, Income statements are really about profitability. It's a, it's a grading card. So we want to know from the stuff that we sold, how much did we make? And how much did it cost us to make it? And that's why when you're in the service end of the business, um, you're almost subject to being like, well, do they add value? You know, do they make us money? Can we directly see how they make us money? So it is very much, again, your job to understand what are the goals of the organization? Where is money being made? On their annual report, what are our important products? And figuring out <coughs> kind of how am I connected to that product that gets sold for $2 million. And work with your manager to kind of develop that. And then expenses, there's a lot, and you'll see payroll is down here. Um, on any typical um, income statement, payroll can be anywhere from 10% up to 50%. It's usually one of the larger expenses, which is why when corporations want to manage stuff, they go getting rid of people. Because you not only have salaries, but you have taxes and you have benefits. And then at the end, you know, when other stuff is taken out, including taxes, you've got the bottom line. So again, I'm not here to have you walk out as a financial wizard. I just want to do sort of the shake in your boots that the corporation, when they're just thinking about numbers, in a lot of sense, you're not so much a liability, you're an expense. And there's three ways organizations can make money. One is to bring in more sales. The other is to reduce expenses. And then the other is to manage this payment of, uh, manage how much money goes out of the door and when it goes in the door. And so I'll show you cash flow real quickly. So that if uh, money is coming in the corporation, it's making money by uh, maybe putting into a CD or treasury management. And if they can put off paying bills, that they're again making money on money that they have. And then cash flow is that third statement. And it really is looking at, again, when does money come in, when does money come out? So on a monthly basis, they look at cash that comes in and it's only cash. So if something that, you know, so let's say some drugs are sold and uh, pharmaceuticals are sold and um, it's to the government. Well, they may have the order for 20 million, but it probably isn't getting paid until 90 days later. So because this is cash, that 20 million might not, although the transaction is signed off in January, it might not show up until December, okay? Which means that that cash isn't available. It's identifying where do you want to be? So on those bottom two grids, I'd like you to um, write down your closest approximation of the value that you add to your organization right now. 